Sydney, Australia. It's known as one of the most expensive cities in the world and in this video we're going to see how far 100 US dollars can get us. 100 US dollars equals about 134 Australian dollars. So we've got 140 Australian dollars here. So the goal with this video is to make the most of our time in Sydney without sacrificing on the Australian experience on the best of Sydney. So let's see how far $100 can get us. Alrighty, so right now we're gonna go in for a typical Australian breakfast. We're gonna get the smashed avo. That's like the most popular breakfast dish here. We're at a joint called The Walrus here in Pitt Street in the Sydney CBD. So let's get some breakfast. So you may have heard that coffee culture is a real big thing here in Sydney. And what we've got here is the flat white. This is popular in New Zealand and Australia. So it's basically a shot of espresso, got some foam and milk. It's similar to a latte, but slight differences. I'm no coffee connoisseur. In Australia, we don't do Starbucks. It's not really a thing. We have them, but the coffee in Australia is good that we get them from baristas. So let's taste this flat white. Oh. There's nothing like Australian coffee. New Zealand coffee is good, but this is so good. But when you're in Australia, you definitely got to get an Australian flat white. So here in Australia, smashed avo on toast is like a modern Aussie cuisine staple. And this bad boy costs 19.80, so not exactly the most budget-friendly option. But what we got here is poached egg. I'm gonna see if I can get that oozing action. Let's see. If, ooh, look at that. Let's see if we can get a close up of that. Of that egg oozing. Look at that yolk. So it's not necessarily a very big meal for 1980, but it looks aesthetic. We've got another poached egg here. Get some ooze action. Ooh, look at that. I've never actually tried this before because it's so expensive. But I want to see what all the hype is about. This is like a must try a modern Australian dish. I might, might just grab my hands here. It's got better on it. It's got that yolk bursting, the avocado. It's, I don't know, I'm feeling it's a bit overrated to be honest. The sourdough's fresh, but I don't know. I guess you've got to try this when you're in Australia for some reason. Avo. Keep in mind it's not the most budget friendly option but it's tasty, it's not bad. So that wasn't a cheap breakfast there, that's about a quarter of our budget blown already so if you're on a strict budget I don't recommend it but to get the Aussie breakfast experience you're probably going to want to try Smashed Avo at some point but yeah it's pretty expensive. So one of the best ways to explore a new city is to just simply walk around, take it in. It's free, it's good exercise, so that's all we're doing right now. We're walking in. What's that, the Queen Victoria building to my left here? So right now we're in a Woolly shopping center. Got my mask on for COVID safety. So here you can get some cheap snacks. Let's see if we can find some typical Aussie snacks. And let's see what the prices are of common items. So right now we're strolling around Circular Quay. This is a free thing to do. It doesn't cost any money to go for a nice walk along here where the Sydney Harbour Bridge is. The classic coat hanger. Is that the nickname for it? The, the coat hanger. It's a nice sunny day. Welcome to the Sydney Opera House. This is free. Doesn't cost a thing to walk around. Check out the area around here. And we've got the Botanic Gardens down there. That'll be a nice pleasant stroll. So you don't need to spend too much money unless you want to do a dedicated activity or a tour. It's always free to just walk around, explore the site. So let's check out these Botanic Gardens, have a nice leisurely stroll while we save our money. This has to be one of the best spots in Sydney to have a picnic. Picnics have become popular ever since our old New South Wales Premier 
encouraged us to have picnics because it's apparently COVID safe. But as you can see, you don't need to spend a lot of money to do that. Just grab some food from the local Woolies, grab some fish and chips, have a picnic. That's a great budget way to have fun here in Sydney. Got the CBD back there, the harbour, bloody beautiful. In terms of accommodation here in Sydney, you're not gonna have too much fun trying to find something under a hundred dollars. So the only real options are hostels. So I'm gonna go have a look through Hostel World and let's see what deals we can find here. So let's go hostelworld.com. Let's go so Sydney. We check in what's the date today, the 25th and check out on the 26th. I'd see what options we have here. Okay, so we've got the Wake Up Sydney Central, 1.7 kilometers from the CBD, rated 9.5 and from 27 Australian dollars. So that is not bad. So as you can see on this recording, Looks like there's a good atmosphere. Let's see the facilities. Let's see what we get for $27. Got security lockers, common room, air conditioning, hot showers, reading light, microwave, laundry. Well, it's got a lot of awards. So, fifth worldwide extra large hostel, seventh worldwide extra large hostel, most popular hostel is Sydney. It's got a lot of awards here. The Wake Up Sydney Central got some good reviews so for $27 this is what you get let's see what type of room that was that was a for $29 you got a standard eight bed mixed dorm prefer the mixed dorms so, or you can have the all men's <coughs> for, for all of you <coughs> cater for everyone on this channel you can have the all men's dorms <laughs> As long as you don't keep the other guests awake, that's all that matters. Yeah, so this looks good. Wake up Sydney Central for 27 Australian dollars. Well, that'd be about 20, 20 bucks USD. That's not too bad. So I feel like the deal is in Sydney, you could get for a hundred dollars, two nights accommodation and eat shit food, or you could do one night and have good food so that's sort of what you can expect to get for a hundred dollars and no real activities because as soon as you start doing activities your budget's going to blow that's the reality of sydney but it's surprising you can get something for 27 australian dollars so that's not bad for a decent looking hostel crikey mate look what i found what we got here is an indigenous bird to australia this is the the bin chicken or ibis these things they'll steal your chips They'll take your burger patty, they'll rummage through the bins, and they'll fuck you up. These bad boys can get up to two meters high. We like to eat the meat from them. They're the younger cousin of the emu. lunch we're at this place called the Edinburgh Castle what we're gonna get is a chicken parmy or chicken parma so that's like a typical lunch meal sometimes you get the lunch special you get it with a beer and it's a lot cheaper most of the time so let's stick into a chicken parma so again we don't have the cheapest meal here we've got the chicken parma which costs $25 and a beer which is a corona which is $9.80 so as you can see it's not cheap here in Sydney but you got to make a compromise you can eat 7-eleven food or you can enjoy some decent food so let's see how this chicken parmi is like I said chicken parmigiana typical pub meal usually it's a pretty big serving size so it's not cheap we needed to order online as you can see but let's see what we get so what we got here is our $25 chicken parmi or chicken parma so it's a crumb chicken schnitzel it's got like a tomato sauce and a looks like pocket chili to be honest this is quite a small chicken schnitzel like sometimes you get monster ones and for $25 it's a bit expensive so the Edinburgh castle it's looking a bit expensive but let's dig into this chicken snitty chicken parma Take a look at this cross section here. Yeah. 
tastes like a typical pub feed. This chicken parmy, it's not nothing special to be honest, but let's taste some of these chips. It's nothing special to be honest. I've heard good reviews about this place in Edinburgh, but for $25, it's not the best value, but anyway, it's a chicken palmy. It's a typical Aussie dish that you gotta try. So we are 85 Australian dollars down, or about 63 US dollars down. That wasn't the best value for money meal, that one. It was a pretty shit chicken palmy, to be honest, but it just goes to show that Sydney, it isn't cheap. Yeah, 63 dollars US down, so let's see what we get up to for the rest of the day here in Sydney. So we're in Sydney's Chinatown, and there is one thing I know for sure which is good value and that is the Emperor Puffs here from Chinatown. So I'm going to show you what the Emperor Puff is and you should definitely pick them up when you're in Chinatown. But right now in Chinatown, it seems like the atmosphere is not here. Obviously you don't have any tourists here at this particular time. So here we got the iconic Emperor Puffs. So we got seven of these bad boys for $3. So that's some good value here in Sydney. So it's a little like a Chinese bakery. These are hot, you can see them made fresh. And it's like a custard oozing out. Let's get some of that close up action. So these are a good little snack, especially when you're strolling through Chinatown. So just an update about those cream puffs. It actually cost me 350 on my Amex. I don't know if you can see there, but maybe it was a 50 cent surcharge, which is a lot, but it's still pretty cheap. So the good thing about Sydney is that the beaches are very nearby. So we're gonna head to Bondi Beach and we're heading there by train right now at Town Hall Station. And what you wanna pick up is one of these bad boys, the Opal card. You can top these off, top them up at the 7-Elevens, or you can just enter your debit card details, do it through the Opal app, or you can also just use your debit card and tap on at the terminal. So it all works, the Opal and your cards, they all work with buses, ferries, trains. So yeah, we're gonna go to Bondi Junction Station and check out Bondi Beach. So our transportation option here in Bondi is the Lime bikes here. You can download the Lime app and go on it, but we can't double up because that's not safe. So we're all about safety here. So we're just gonna walk it. So we just got off at the bus stop. It's about, about a K away, but the thing is, it's beautiful weather today here in Bondi. And we're just checking out the houses here. We'll even though ourselves. some of them are a bit run down, these joints here, even to rent some of these places, they'd probably set you back 400 Australian a week. And they'd be like over a million each, even like for some shoebox size places. But it's a real nice area here, Bondi. So keen to go check out the beach. I think see the atmosphere, it's probably gonna be pumping today. Alrighty, so we've arrived here at Bondi Beach. So it doesn't cost a dollar to take a swim in the iconic Bondi Beach. It doesn't cost a thing to go for a stroll and just enjoy the sights, take it in. Look at that. Go for a swim, I'm not swimming today, but it's free. So along Bondi Beach here, as you can see, we've got all this pretty cool artwork. Doesn't cost a thing, you don't need to pay to enter any museums. Just walk along the beach, check it all out. There's some pretty cool ones. So behind me is the famous Bondi to Bronte beach walk another free activity you get some exercise it takes you all the way down to Bronte some of the other beaches you go down to Coogee so that's free alrighty so for dinner we're at this joint called Char Grill Charlie's we're gonna get a classic Aussie takeaway dish some chicken and chips looks very cost-effective good value for money a lot better than what we got before so let's see what we get from Char Grill Charlie's here in Bondi so we got our dinner feed from Char Grill Charlie's here all this costs $16.40 so we got a half Portuguese chicken and a regular chips. Looks like a decent size, so this is pretty solid value here. So you can come down, chill, got the nice views. So let's try these chips. Probably should have got some sauce. Wasn't included. Pretty 
average chips to be honest. I probably should have went with the salad. They had lots of good fresh salads there. Oven baked vegetables, but what we got here is the chicken. Portuguese chicken, look at that. Let's taste the chicken. Pretty flavoursome, pretty tender, juicy. Solid meal. I was gonna say good value there. If you're in Bondi, maybe check out Char Grill Charlie's. They got lots of range there. They have like low what's up Biscoff? Biscoff thick shakes and stuff, apple pie, so they had a good range there. Pretty solid value. Yeah, so we spent 78 US dollars. I'll update the total price with the transportation costs. Probably wouldn't cost much. We only really went here to Bondi, but yeah, we'll see what we're up to in price. So that is what 100 US dollars could get us here in Sydney. As you can see, we stuck to free activities. There's plenty of free things to do. You don't need to do the big Sydney Harbour Bridge climb and all the zoo and stuff to have a good time. But you could maximize your value with looking at cheaper options for the food. Those two first options were quite expensive, but you're either gonna spend some money on food or you can always just go to 7-Eleven, go to the Woolies. But Food's a big part of the travel experience, so you can make the compromise, but it's up to you. But as you can see there, Sydney's pretty expensive. I'm not gonna do more of these sort of $100 videos here in, in the world, so in different locations around the world. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.